In this lecture, we're gonna pick our first campaign name to build from the Poppin website, and then we're gonna talk about network settings. So let's jump right in. Going back to the Poppin website, I'm gonna drill down, go back to the homepage real quick. I'm gonna drill down into furniture, and I'm gonna go into office chairs and stools. Now my first impression, and I'm just walking you through my own thought process as if this was the first time I was on this site. Of course it's not. I would maybe say, okay, we'll have a campaign for furniture and I'll have a, an ad group for desks and an ad group for fire, file cabinets and an ad group for office chairs, et cetera, et cetera. But once I drill into office chairs, I see that there's a number of options even below office chairs. I see there's drafting chairs, there's stacking chairs, there's task chairs, there's stools, there's might be executive chairs, right? So I feel that there's enough of a segmentation here because these products are quite different. Because let's say I take a look at active seating. Right, you have these, these uh, this is sort of a new uh, hot topic and you have these, uh, these stools and then I have task chairs which are very different and then I have stacking chairs which might be better for conference rooms or for lunch rooms, et cetera. And there's a lot of search volume. I know from my own research and we'll talk about keyword research in a future lecture when we talk about keywords, but I know that there's a lot of volume for these different types of chairs. So I wanna make sure that I could have a separate ad group for each one of these different types of chairs. So I wanna have an ad group for task chairs and an ad group for stools. And if that's the case, I'm gonna to need to have a campaign just for office chairs. It's not enough for me to have a campaign just for furniture. So I'm gonna create, my first campaign is going to be for office chairs and stools. I'm just gonna call it office chairs. There's no right exact rule. You wanna basically have a fine balance between giving them, bringing them to the right area of your, of your site, but also allowing them to then have a menu of things and, and to choose from and to go find the information they're looking for on their own. It's a really, really important concept. Not only will it not hurt your conversion rate, it will actually increase your conversion rate. So it's important to think about. So going back into AdWords, we're gonna name our camp campaign simply office chairs. The next option we have is to choose networks. Search network or display network and by default, and again, this is one of the things that Google does by default to get you to spend more money. The first thing you wanna do is deselect display network. If you keep display network selected, this is what was used to be referred to for some of you who are, who are not new to Google Ads, this used to be called search network with display select, which meant that I'm, I'm gonna create ad groups and search ads and my text ads with my headlines and my descriptions and so on and so forth and my text links and my all my different ad extensions and Google will be able to show those ads on the display network, so on all these other websites. The problem is, that's not search advertising. Search advertising is being able to capitalize on a user's intent, being able to show an ad, to pay for an ad, when a user is specifically searching for the products and services that I offer. If I'm showing my ads on the display network, then I'm in a totally different ballgame. Not that that's bad, but don't ever combine the two things. Keep your data clean, keep your data organized. It's such an important concept that you'll see as a continuing thread throughout this course. I have the option of deselecting uh, include Google search partners. Now, what in the world is this option of Google search partners? Well, let's jump into some slides and we're gonna go through that right now. So search partner network, how to decide, welcome to the first slide. So let's, take, let's do a quick overview of the search partner network. The search partner network includes sites like YouTube, Amazon, ask.com, Google Maps, about.com, many, many others. There's no official list. These are sites that have search functionality within them, and there's not just a handful. There's thousands and tens of thousands of sites like this that use Google search functionality in some way in their websites, and, and there's a range between real, legitimate websites, like the ones I'm listing above, and, and just tons of these random blogs that, that also use um, search functionality. Now the difference between this and the display network, while these are websites outside of Google's property, Google search property, they're not display ads. They are still ads that will be shown when a user performs a specific search. It's still based on keyword targeting. It's totally different than the display network. It's like this sort of medium level. The reason why Google itself is better is because people have more trust in the Google results an ad means something more in Google search results than it means something in ask.com or on a random blog. The list, there is no official list of Google search partners. That's sort of annoying, right? It, there's no official list. Google's very opaque with which websites are included. They give a few examples and it does change regularly. What we've typically seen is that click the rate on, on partner sites will not affect the quality score of your keywords. That's a Great question a lot of people have had, and we haven't gotten into quality score yet, but a lot of you know what quality score is, and, and click the rate is one of the factors inside quality score. It actually accounts for about 65% of quality score. It's a really important factor. But if you have a less than average or a poorer, a worse click-through rate on a certain keyword from a partner site, 
it will not affect quality score on um, your keywords, your actual keyword level quality score. We've also found that click-through rate does tend to be significantly lower on search partner sites. We've, we've seen as well cost per click to be lower, but we've also seen conversion rates to be lower. So all indicators seem to indicate that the quality of traffic coming from Google search partners isn't as good. Another interesting point to note about the search partner network, if you choose to run your ads on the search partner network, is that you'll never know what sites your ads appeared on. So what do you need to know about the search partner network? Some strategies and some suggestions. For branded search terms, so when I say branded search terms, I mean when people are searching for the name of your brand, the name of your company. Um, then the search partner network sometimes converts better, um, but also has higher average CPCs. Now, why do you think that might be? Take a second to think about it. So one reason I think is um, a logical reason is that there's less competition. On Google search, a lot of your competitors will be running their own ads against your brand on Google search campaigns and they might not be opting into the Google search partner network so there'll be less competition. So if somebody searches for your brand, right away if you're running on the search partner network, it's going to um, get more a, a larger share of those clicks whereas on Google, it's very possible that some of your competitors, especially if you're in, your, in a bigger space in a more aggressive competitive landscape, that some of your competitors are actually running ads on your brand and search terms which kind of stinks but it's part of the game. There's no right or wrong answer as to whether or not you should advertise on the search partner network. But here's a basic thing to think about. If you have a limited budget and you're just starting out, I highly recommend excluding the search partner network. You can always add it later. I always say, whatever money that you could spend on Google search, on Google search itself without the search partner network, you should be spending on Google search. That's something which is um, just some, a really, really good overall best practice. Google search will typically perform the best out of any other campaign um, type in AdWords, in Google Ads, except for Google Shopping, and that's a whole separate category. Um, but you should really consider excluding search partners, and if this is your first campaign or your first group of campaign, or if, you're, if you think you have more money that you could spend on Google Search, then you should continue to exclude Google Search partners except for branded traffic, and only work on the Google Search network. I, I highly recommend that strategy. So that's a little bit about the search partner network, what you need to know. Let's jump back into our Google Ads account setup and I'm going to deselect include Google search partners. Um, and of course, you see this little notification from, from Google right here. Most advertisers include their ads on Google search partner sites. Great, thank you. Guess why? Guess why they want you to do that? Take a wild guess. They want you to spend more money. Google gets paid a commission every single time you click an ad on any of their search partner sites. Um, so they're very, very, very interested in having you spend money on the Google search partner network. And down here you have this nice little, little notification. Don't miss the opportunity to reach more people across 3 million sites and apps. Sounds so enticing. That's another way for Larry and Sergey to get your money. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about locations. Um, probably break this down into a couple lectures. It's going to be uh, a lot to talk about, lots of different ways to set up location targeting, uh, things to think about, and once we get into the advanced options, there's, there'll be more things to think about in terms of targeting and excluding. Um, and I will see you guys very soon in the very next lecture when we begin talking about location settings. Cheers for now.